All right, welcome back giant growers. It's Chris Brown, Garden of Giants YouTube channel. And today we are going to talk tissue testing. It is something that when you get into the giant growing world, you tend to start to do. And why tissue test? Well, tissue test is going to tell us what that plant is pulling up out of your soil. A lot of us have soil tested and we know what's in the soil, but now we need to know, is this plant pulling up out of the soil what we know is in the soil. And that's exactly what a tissue test will do. But how do you take a tissue test? Well, today we're gonna show you exactly how to take it, how to wrap it up for shipping and send it off. And then part two of this will be when I get the tissue test back, what they say and how we will adjust if we need to. So join me today and let's figure out how to do a tissue test. All right, so taking a tissue sample is important. It's important to know where to take it at. So as we see, this is the kind of the little head of the vine and then it goes back. Um, what I like to do is I like to take the first mature leaf. So obviously, not mature not mature not mature even this one not mature this one's still opening so not mature this one's getting close but i am probably going to do this one um, the leaves on this plant this is the 1109 jutris at least on this stem seem a little smaller than normal so i'm going to take um this one but how I'm going to do it is just like when you soil sample, you take different places in your garden. I'm going to try to take a sample from that end, further up towards the front of the plant, that end, further up towards the front of the plant, further back here, further back here, and then right on the very front. So I'll have five samples to send off. Maybe I'll do a sixth one, but um, the key is getting the first mature leaf so this for me will be one two three four five this will be leaf number five or i can do number six i'll probably do number five for this one and then i'll look for some some thicker stalked ones but just for ease of showing you so you'll take it you'll cut it off right at the base here and then this is real important we don't need all that leaf so we're gonna take it and we're gonna cut that's the most of the leaf I would even have um, it's real important to give some area right there this is important and then obviously the stock think of it like a little celery stock so we're gonna collect about five or six of these per plant and this is what we will then wrap up and send off to, to the lab. Um, let's, uh, let's go get some more. All right, giant growers, we have our, our samples, our celery stocks. Uh, they're really the stock of a giant pumpkin. Um, cut just like that. So remember when you do it to cut it just like that and make sure they're clean. Make sure you don't have dirt all over them. Um, also make sure if you use a collection container, say you're going out to grab a few of them, use a plastic one. Don't use a metal one, metal can contaminate. Um, if you do have to wash them off, wash them off with purified water. You know, you don't want any contaminants to get on there. These are clean, but if there was some dirt on them or something like that and we had to wash them off, that's the way we would do it. Uh, make sure you mark your bag. So I have on a paper, plant A equals the 1109 Jutris. They don't, the lab doesn't need to know the name of the plant. This is all they need, a plant A, a plant B, plant C, and so on and so forth. Um, never use plastic bag. Always use paper bag. You need breathable. These have to breathe. If they don't breathe, if they're put into plastic, they will rot, they will rot fast. I typically do a two day shipping to, to any lab I'm using. I want it there guaranteed two days. It'd be preferred overnight, but sometimes those, the overnight ones become 
um, cost prohibitive. So two day is what I is what I do. Um, and then here's how I do it. I wrap it up in in um, paper towel. Now I like to use paper towel that does not have ink in it. So if you notice, this is just pure white, um, but just wrap them up real simple, real easy. This is breathable and you put it in this bag. The bag is breathable. And then I will tie off the top here. Make sure that it's tie tight. Uh, just just in case, I'll probably put plant A on a couple different sides, just to be safe, um, so that they can they know which one is which. And then I will put all my samples together into one box and then ship it off. So we'll show you that later. Uh, but I got a lot more samples to take. All right, I'll quickly show you for sunflowers how to take a tissue test. Um, I'm still debating on if I'm gonna send one in because these guys look so good. But if you were going to do a sunflower tissue test, um, you, would, you would ignore all these top leaves here um, and you would look for the one that is most mature, the first most mature one. And for me, that looks like um, you're probably, I probably would pull this one and then probably this one. So these two I would pull. And then what I would do instead of taking all from one, I would do one or two from, you know, my line of, of, of uh, sunflowers. And the reason why is because they all look almost identical. So if if uh, if I had a much larger grouping of them, I would probably I would probably do a section. So I would do this section of sunflowers and this section, but because I just have uh, 12 of them here in a row and they all look like literally identical, um, I'm gonna probably if I do it, I'm gonna take two from there, two from there, two from there. We'll get six. Call it good, but just so you know when you're taking a tissue sample off a sunflower do not use the immature leaves look for the first mature leaf um, newly matured that way it has everything that it's pulled out of the ground into it and it's not in the process of pulling stuff out of the ground so real quick tip there let's head over to tomatoes all right giant growers Another tissue sample that I take, and I'll show you guys how to do it, are tomato tissue samples. Now, this one's a little bit more maybe complicated than the pumpkin. Um, but really what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at the top here. You got one, two, three, so we're gonna go with the fourth. Try to get the fourth or fifth leaf down depending on the maturity level. If it looks pretty mature, we'll take it. So this one right here, we're gonna take, and that's what we'll send in. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, let's take this one. And so on and so forth, pretty easy. Wrap them up the same, we'll send them off, but we wanna know uh, if we, uh, what we need in these plants to grow these giant tomatoes to the size that I've been able to grow them and that I'm hoping all you grow them. Um, in fact, if you look right here, there's a nice little mega. So we need to make sure this plant is pulling up out of the ground exactly what it needs to make sure that tomato is uh, getting everything it needs to get as big as we can get it. All right, thanks guys, grow them big. All right, giant growers, the final process before we ship out the tissue samples. We have our tissue sample. Sample A, sample A, tied, put it in the box. B in the box. 
C in the box. D in the box. And E in the box. Now, because it's going to be so warm today, I'm also going to put in a little ice that I have a triple pack. So ice in a blue bag, the blue bag in a green bag, all Ziploc, and then back in another blue bag. You don't want water to get in there. This little bit of plastic isn't going to do anything. And the coolness that will slowly just sink through all this will keep the, the samples in, uh, in proper proper condition for the two-day journey so we'll just wrap this up put the new label on and you are good to go we'll get it there in a couple days and we should be we should be uh, get results probably by the end of the week I'm hoping all right thank you so much giant growers uh, if you like the video, definitely hit like, subscribe if you want to see more tips and tricks on how to grow giants. And until next time, grow them big.